welcome to the March 2022 edition of Barnstorming with Jason Ringenberg. I debated whether to do this edition or not, given the Russian invasion of Ukraine and all the events that have proceeded from that. Honestly, I just didn't feel it was appropriate for me to be talking about music and stuff and my own past and whatever, given that the Ukrainian people are fighting for their homes and their families and their nation in the face of this gigantic Russian invasion. It is one of the most inspiring stories for the 21st century. It's an amazing thing that's happening right now as we speak. Also, it's inspiring to see the risks and all the things that the Eastern Europeans are doing to help the Ukrainian refugees and supply, to directly supply, the Ukrainians with arms and humanitarian assistance. It's a really incredible thing what those folks are doing. The Poles, the Romanians, the Latvians, the Estonians, etc., etc. All the folks that are bordering Russia in that region are taking a huge risk to give any support whatsoever to the Ukrainian rebels. The rest of the world, of course, has come to the table as well, but what it all boils down to is the courage of those Ukrainian people. It's an amazing story. Now, lots of folks are making the parallel between World War II and what's happening now. And it's a very valid parallel. What, Pu what Putin is doing is very Hitler-esque. Uh, the invasion is, is very, uh, really harkens back to the events of World War II when the Nazis in, did all their invasions of, of Eastern and Western Europe. But what a lot of folks don't, aren't making the connection to is that in 1939, the tiny country of Finland also stood up to a major aggression. The modern state of Finland was born out of the ashes of World War I. And they were struggling to form their democracy and make it a modern state in the 1920s and the 1930s. In the 1920s, they fought a terrible civil war with each other, with the Finn whites fighting the, the Finn Reds, the communists. Eventually, the whites prevailed, and um, they started forming this democracy in this modern society. Another thing that folks have sort of forgotten about in history, and even at the time, it made barely a blip on the, on the international radar, was that when, when Germany invaded Poland, when the Nazis invaded Poland, they, of course, were roundly criticized around the world, and the French and the English declared war on them for doing so. But, a few weeks into the conflict, the Soviet Union also invaded Finland with a huge army. And they carved up a huge section of eastern Poland for themselves and committed a lot of atrocities against the Polish people. So Stalin was feeling his oats. He had consolidated power in this gigantic Soviet Union. And he had been able to pretty much wield his influence in all the nations around the Soviet Union with impunity. So he decided to issue the Finns an ultimatum. Because Stalin was very uncomfortable with what, with what was happening in Finland. Finland was becoming a democracy, a real democracy. And he felt threatened by that, of course. So he issued the Finns an ultimatum, sort of an excuse very similar to what, Poland, what Putin just did in the, Ukraine, in the leading up to the Ukrainian invasion. Stalin issued an ultimatum. He said there was several a population, uh, several geographic regions of Finland that had lots of Russians in them, and he wanted Finland to secede, to cede those territories to the Russians. These areas were in mostly in the Karelian Peninsula, a very strategic area. And, and parts of eastern Finland. The Finns, to their credit, after much debate, decided to reject the ultimatum. They rejected it out of hand. But they did accept negotiations. So they negotiated with the Russians in Leningrad, and the negotiations went nowhere. The Russians, I'm sorry, the Soviets, were absolutely adamant that the Finns had to cede these territories to them, or else. The Finns went back to, fin to Finland and started, declare and started to prepare for what they thought would be an invasion of their nation. On November 30th, the Soviet Union invaded 
the country of Finland. They crossed the border of Karelia and eastern Finland with 750,000 troops. 750,000 troops, all well armed. They had 6,000 tanks. 6,000 tanks. 4,000 modern airplanes. They did not just stick to the areas they wanted to conquer. It was a general overall offensive across the entire Finland-Soviet border. They bombed Helsinki right off the start. All the major cities of Finland were bombed the very first day. The Finns, to counter this offensive, did have an army of 300,000 very committed soldiers. However, they were supported with almost no war material. They barely had enough, even rifles, to supply each of their soldiers. They had, for example, I'll have to quote, have to look at my sheet on this. They had 32 tanks. 32 tanks. They had 114 airplanes in the Finland Air Force. Some of them were biplanes from World War I. 114 planes and 32 tanks to fight 6,000 tanks and 4,000 airplanes. They were outnumbered 3 to 1. <laughs> Everyone across the world when this happened paid very little attention to it. Everyone was focused on the, 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 the Nazi threat. The Americans, the British, and the French paid, paid very little attention to what was happening. And the press across the Western world did the exact same thing and said the exact same things that the press in the Western world said before the Russian invasion of Ukraine. The parallels are exactly the same. Everyone said, Finland will fall within a few days. Helsinki will fall within 24 hours. The Finns have no chance there's no point in us being coming involved in this conflict. We have our own issues trying to fight the Nazis. So the Finns were giving no encouragement, no help at the very beginning of the war. However, just like Ukraine, everyone underestimated these Finland people. These Finnish folks... The army, for starters, even though they were outnumbered three to one and outgunned, not, you can't even make a comparison there. They stood up and fought in those first 24 hours so incredibly brave, bravely. It's an amazing story what happened. That first 24 hours was so important. And they were able to keep the Soviet armies from breaking through their trenches. They were able to do that. And the Finnish Air Force, all 114 planes, got up into the sky. They actually shot down some Soviet planes. And the Soviets at that time had one of the best air forces in the world. The, popula the populace, of course, rose in arms. All of them, everybody, joined in the fight. If a farmer had a shotgun to hunt rabbits, he took that shotgun to the front line and joined the army. That's what they did. All the reservists were called up, of course. Everyone joined in the fight. During the first week, they kept the Russians from taking over those trenches, and they were holding them off, but the Russians were starting to make advances. Then, however, the Finns got their, 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 um, their best ally in the war. The Finnish winter hit early that year. By December, the entire country was covered in snow and ice, and the temperatures were often below zero, very often below zero Fahrenheit. So the Russian offenses bogged down. The Finnish resistance figured out these ways to fight this giant Russian army so effectively. There's all kinds of stories about these farmers fighting and the local populace fighting and the Finnish army sort of working out these, these strategies to, 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 to fight this, this, this gigantic enemy. One of my favorite stories of the Finnish war is that to fund the Finnish air force and to go into, into a to European countries and buy airplanes, they had to have money. The Finnish democracy had almost no money. They had no gold reserves. They were very barely able to keep their government even surviving. So what the Finnish people did, an organization of Finnish citizens got together, and they put out a call for everyone to donate their wedding rings, 
their wedding rings they donated to this organization. And they melted them down into gold, and they went and bought fit, uh, airplanes from the Swedish and other European countries to, to reinforce and to supply the Finnish Air Force. As winter ground on, the Soviets took huge casualties and made very little progress. By March, they signed an armistice, and the, the war was ended. The Winter War, as it was called, was ended. Finland did have to cede part of its territory to the Soviets, but they were able to, con they were able to, to save their country from extinction. Uh, after the Russians invaded, it was obvious they weren't just after those little territories, because they were able to gain most of those little territories in the beginning stages of the war. They wanted to destroy the Finland government. That's what they wanted to do. Just like, totally in parallel to what the Russians are trying to do to the Ukrainians now. It's the exact same parallel. So that winter war of Finland is so much like what's happening now in Ukraine. And in honor of the, the incredible brave um, Ukrainians, and also the folks of Eastern Europe who are supporting those people and putting their own lives and nations at risk as well. I'd like to sing a song. And at first I thought, I'm not going to sing a song today because <laughs> what song am I going to sing that could possibly, that could possibly honor the people of Ukraine and the people of Finland way back yonder and, and the people of Eastern Europe now? What could I do? I am a historian. A lot of my, my songs deal, deal with history, but mostly it's American history, so I couldn't, I couldn't think of a direct a direct sort of link. But I think this song here might, in a very, very tiny, small way, give some honor to those people. So I'm going to try this song now. The song I'm going to do today is called Victory Road, off the Clear Impetuous Morning album. Wrote this, I wrote this song with Perry, Perry Baggs. Perry brought me the chorus of it, pretty much completed, as well as a sort of melody structure for the verses, and then I wrote the verse lyrics for it. When we were writing it, the, the basic focus of it was sort of a personal statement about, you know, about the personal things you grow, go through to, to reach some sort of peace and reach some sort of freedom in your own life. But we were aware that some of the lines could be ter interpreted on a broader sort of social level or a, or a sort of a, more of a world level. So today I'm going to sing that with that in mind. I also would like to say that uh, my own father did served in World War II in the Merchant Marine, and he was in those convoys that supplied war material all around the world. He was, he was attacked by German submarines, etc. So that's just something I would like to say when I sing that line. I always think of that. Anyway, once again, this song is dedicated. It's a very, very small contribution, but it's, it's what I can do. Uh, to all the Ukrainian patriots who are fighting for their country, and the folks in Eastern Europe, who are also risking their lives and their country to support them. Victory Road. Hey. Oh, 
here in Victory Road. Is there a tunnel to the end of the rainbow? Can you help me find the Victory Road? Oh, can you tell me, do you know, how to get from here to Victory Road? Is there a tunnel to the end of the rainbow? Can you help me find the Victory, Victory Road? Thank you, and God save Ukraine.